Aza, did you want to comment? I just wanted to nuance the point about the leap of faith. Um, if, if I know, if we're sure what's going to happen, then it isn't really a leap of faith, is it? it it's precise. If, it, it goes without saying that you need to look after your children, your loved ones, your community, etc. But the leap of faith is to go beyond, is to go where you don't know what the outcome is, and perhaps to go where you feel you may be the enemy or be perceived as the unwanted, as the other. The leap of faith is to nevertheless serve and nevertheless give of yourself in whatever capacity. That is the leap of faith that fundamentally for me underlines solidarity. As a Muslim woman who's lived for many years in the Western Hemisphere um, and thereby acquired Dutch citizenship, I've learned that actually the idea of merit is exactly as Stancia said and what you were noting earlier, Shelley. It's a very nice principle, but it actually isn't very nice. Because at the end of the day, we are such different people and with different capacities and ways of existing that the notion of merit is predicted upon a certain, I think, very ethnocentric perception of what capacity and skill is. And it ultimately is about what's, what you can acquire that's outside of you as opposed to what we have inside of us as human beings, which is where faith comes in to me. And that's why I've been committed to serving in that space of religious and faith, because I'm trying to also understand how it is that we can harness that internal that Pope Francis and many other faith leaders speak to, that spirit, the divine within, if you like, who's then supposed to be within all of us, not just within, among those of us who are able to, to afford a good lifestyle and get everything we want. So the leap of faith actually requires a remarkable amount of self-criticism, which few of us, especially none of our institutions as we know them, are willing to engage in. None of our institutions, political, social, cultural, financial, you name it, are willing to be self-critical. Few are, very few are. But it's that lack of self-reflexivity, I think, that, is, that takes us on that path to a certain arrogance about, well, we know it, we know it all. And one of the many things about the Agenda 2030, when it gave us those five principles, people, planet, prosperity, etc., was we have to look at what we are not doing right. Not because we want to sit and beat ourselves and self-flagellate, but because we may have something to learn from what we're not doing right. And by the way, I work with faith communities and institutions, not because they have the answer, but because there's a, there's a habit of trying to actually question the ways in which service take place. And it's the habit of questioning the ways in which service takes place that is fundamental to self-reflexivity. Do I really know it all? Have I really got it all right? And therefore the need to reimagine, which also means recalibrate our very fundamental notions of what we are so firmly believing in. So you tell that to an average Sunni Muslim leader or even to a Catholic cardinal, you need to question why you actually fundamentally believe in hello. Um, not very engaging conversation, that one, and yet a very necessary one. And it's, that's why I say we can't reach, no one faith will ever save us, but all faiths together, we might stand a chance.